Welcome to the Victorious Souls podcast today with me, Danielle Burnock, your host, that lady on the internet who loves you from DanielleBurnock.com. Today, I have a special guest, Vanna Johnson, who is also a friend of mine. And Vanna is an author, and she is a coach, and she is a speaker, but she is living her more. We're going to talk more about that, too. She was in corporate America for 30 years. And she fell to that idea that her worth, her value was tied to her success. Can you relate? Have you ever done that? Tied your worth to what you're doing? Somehow, if you're not doing enough, somehow you're not good enough. Not true. We'll get into that too. But Vana is such an ambassador for peace. People have called her that. I have called her that. And when you hear her talk and how she talks, you're going to feel that peace come through. And so she's going to be sharing how she is living her more, how she came up with that, and how she's helping other people do that also. So thank you for joining me today, Vana. I just can't wait to get into our conversation today. Thank you, Danielle. And thank you for that beautiful introduction. It's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate being here. I'm excited to have this conversation. And I just pray that God will bless people with our conversation and help them see that he has more for them in life as well. Yeah. 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 Well, I forgot to mention at the beginning, I had planned on that, but I really got into the ambassador of peace because I wasn't going to say that being then I was, and then I wasn't. <laughs> and then I guess God wanted me to say that because I couldn't not say that. <laughs> and how okay. that you're no stranger to storms in life either, but that you had an anchor that helped you keep your peace through those times. But before we get into any of the storms and all of that, give us a little background on your life. You know, um, it's funny because I we're not supposed to compare, but it's hard not to. And I have listened to some of your, your episodes and you've had some amazing conversation with some people who have been through so much. And when I look at that, I think, oh, you know, my, my life has been pretty easy. And I, I think I have a tendency, you know, I, I had somebody, I'm probably getting ahead of myself a little bit, but I had my, somebody ask me one time, it was after um, my, I had an unplanned pregnancy and I, I made the choice to, to have that baby. And it was somewhere when, when, um, you know, my, my son was probably, I don't know, four or five years old or whatever. I was talking to somebody one day and they were like, how, how did you do that? That so, it had to have been so hard. And my answer was, I just did what I had to do. I just took the next step. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I got ahead of myself a little bit. So let's rewind. Um, you know, I grew up in a really small rural town in South Dakota. And it was one of those where, you know, it was like my friends were my family. I mean, we were, we were very close knit. Um, so it's really sheltered from life. And, um, you know, there's just so much to be said about that, that kind of a lifestyle. And I think, I think our world has even, even those small towns have shifted away from, from of that protection that we used to have when we, because of the internet and, and access mm -hmm. to news 24 <clears> seven, <throat> we have the innocence that we had back in, back in my day growing mm -hmm. up in day. So, so anyway, um, you know, I grew up in a church. Some of my best memories as a little girl were sitting next to my grandmother in our little steeple church, belting out those songs. And I'm sure I was saying as much out of tune then as I do now, <laughs> but she didn't care. Um, and what, yeah. So, you know, I grew up in that church, but as um, we, we moved to the, the big town, which was like 10,000 back then, I think <laughs> um, when I was, oh, probably fourth grade, between third and fourth grade. And um, my folks ended up getting divorced and oh. um, we drifted away from the church, you know, kind of in that era. And, and we, you know, all three of us kids kind of went to that, that, place where we were all searching for something and you know our friends were you know wild at really young ages we were partying and, and doing things that I know that my grandmother would have just <laughs> not 
um, you know, I, I, who, who knows how much she really knew, but um, I, I, we tried to always shelter from, from some of the, the realities of what our lives were like. But yeah, it was, it was not great there for a long time. Totally yeah, divorce is hard on kids. And back then, I don't imagine people talked about it, did they? I mean, even mm -hmm. now, it's called like the silent trauma because they tell the kids, you're better off this way. So somehow you shouldn't be traumatized. And some of them are and some of them aren't, depending on how it affected them. So to talk about it, you know, they have a part that it affected them. It's not just about the parents. Yeah. Yeah. And that is so true. And, you know, I, I talk about in my first book, you know, I made the comment that, you know, my dad left me. And I thought it was interesting because that really triggered someone in my family. They were like, I can't believe you said that. But that was the reality. And that was that was my response to what happened. And we stayed in touch, but we didn't see him much. He he had, you know, he was working, he was traveling. Um, it was just, you know, it was an era. So um, fortunately, um, there was a time in my college years that me and my dad reconnected. And um, Aww, just that's nice. Yeah, just really blessed because in this era in our lives, he actually goes to church with me every week. Um, and just, you know, it's everything has changed. And wow, really, that's a cool story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, truly, because um, what what isn't often talked about is that I really got to know my dad when I was at that point where my friends were all hanging out at the bar and I wasn't old enough. Mm. But he, was, he was always there. Mm -hmm. And so I would tell the, the bouncer at the door that I was there to meet my dad. Yeah. And I just, I would go sit with him and have a drink with him so that it was believable that that's why I was there. And then I would go hang out with my friends, but that's how I got to know him. Mm -hmm. So God really does bring good from all situations. You know, it's, it's cool how he can take a situation where a lot of people would look at it and say how sad that was but mm -hmm. that's a beautiful part of my story because I love that man with all my heart and yeah. who knows if I hadn't been drawn to that lifestyle would would we have connected where would we have connected I don't know wow that is so cool that you had that opportunity yeah, yeah so was this when was that in your time frame you were at the doing that was that before you had your son yeah, yeah. Um, actually, it was kind of it was during my college years. Um, it's South Dakota. We had a eighteen early drinking age where you could drink three two beer, and then back then we don't mm -hmm. drink anymore. And then you know to get into the um, hard liquor bars, it was twenty one. I can't believe we're talking about this on your show. This is supposed <laughs> to be a Christian podcast. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. But anyway, um, it's reality. You know, so Let's yeah. talk about reality. This so, is, you know, we're both Christians, but that doesn't take reality out of our life. Truly, truly. And I think it's important sometimes that I think there's a misperception out there that when you become a Christian, you know, you're all good things disappear from your or all bad things disappear from your life and everything is just you know, um, sunsets and flowers and butterflies. And, <laughs> you know, we both know better than that. Um, no, that's not true. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, that would have been in my early twenties, probably when I started getting reconnected, all my friends were older. And so they were already in that 21 bar setting. And so that was kind of my solution to that. So yeah, that would have been in my early twenties. Um, I got pregnant, I believe when I was 23. So just a few years after this is when mm -hmm. it happened. And, you know, it's one of those things where I actually had been dating, um, my baby's father for like 10 years. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, we had, we had broken up and so we had a reconciliation and <laughs> my son was the result of that reconciliation, not, not a lasting relationship, mm. but, uh, you know, so many people could look at that as, you know, ruining my life. And honestly, it was the best thing, the absolute best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. Um, wow. Let's just pause and think about that for a minute for our listeners, what some people think could have ruined your life became one of the best things that happened to you. So if you who are listening are going through something that you feel like it might be life ruining, pause mm -hmm. and consider and ask God, real short prayer, help 
You don't have to, have to memorize that. Anybody can say that one. Ask him for help and he'll help you through whatever hard thing you're dealing with, whatever, however scary it is. And he has the ability to take that thing that could be life ruining and turn it into something amazing. And that's what you have just demonstrated with your life, Anna. Thank you. <clears throat> well, you know, I always say that. Um, so my, I was going, I had, was in college and was, um, had taken a break and realized I actually was, had already re-registered for college before I found out that I was pregnant. So I was on that path mm -hmm. and, um, and was kind of finishing up. And I always said that my, the husband, so my son was born in February and exactly a year later I had, I graduated the December after he was born and exactly a year later, almost exactly. I met my husband. It's like, I started my job. I, I graduated in December, started my job in January, my son's first birthday, or my, I met my future husband early in February. And then my son's first birthday was in February. So it was like all of this stuff was going on in my life. And then all of a sudden God was like, okay, let's, let's get that life started. And it was like, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Everything just kind of fell into place. But I always said that my had I not gotten pregnant the man that I married wouldn't have looked at me twice because of the party girl that I was and the lifestyle I was living that wasn't what he was looking for mm -hmm. and and so again God knew better you know and <laughs> and I, part of my story is I'm very very much pro-life and and part of the reason for that is is because I know firsthand that God can use that to turn our lives around and, and make it very beautiful. And, you know, it's all, it's all pieces of the puzzle that come together to make us who we are. And so many times we think we know better um, mm -hmm. when we, when we can just stop and, and listen and trust God, because literally I felt like he spoke to me the day I was sitting on the edge of the, the tub reading the, the little early pregnancy test. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt like he just said to me, we've got this. We've got this. Oh, I knew, yeah. <clears throat> I knew inst I always thought that I was in favor of abortion and in fact had gone through that with a friend of mine in high school. And even as hard as that was for both of us, um, all, actually all three of us, because it was her, her boyfriend at the time too. I, I still thought that that would be the solution because I hadn't learned what the, the impact that that had on her all these years later, even yet. But anyway, um, that it was instantaneous. I knew that there was no way I would go through with that. In fact, my my doctor, my on my first appointment when I went in to confirm the pregnancy, you know, because of my young age and being a single and everything, he offered to me. He said, "Well, you know, you there are options here." Mm -hmm. I said, "No, sir, there are not." And I never went back to that doctor again. Wow. Well, you definitely are coming from the position of having experience to go with it. You don't just have head knowledge of what you believe. You're not just opening your Bible and trying to wave it at someone about what you believe. You have firsthand experience on both sides. Yeah. So that's that's very powerful. And just like I said, an ambassador of peace, just how you talk to people is so calming. So yeah. I want to just... Pause for my listeners here. If you are struggling in this area and you want someone safe to talk to, you know, we will give you the information about Vana. Reach out to her and she will help you talk your way through. And I don't believe she's going to force you to do anything. She can't anyways, but she would she would want you to feel that love and that support on the inside that you are not alone. Absolutely. I would I would welcome the opportunity to have those kinds of conversations and not always even just with the individual themselves that are going through with it, because I know how hard that call is to make, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's having that conversation with the mom, the sister, the best friend who yeah. doesn't know how to deal with that difficult conversation. Yeah. And you graduated in there, you said, and then you started your job. So you went right from graduating right into corporate America. What, what did you do in corporate America? I worked for the statewide housing development authority. So I, I started out in, in management. We administered like section eight housing. I don't know if people are familiar with that, but basically subsidy for low-income families. 
And what was really kind of ironic about that was because I was on all the programs when I was first, you know, that single mom. And, and I, again, I felt like God used that as an opportunity to help me have compassion and understanding for people who are struggling. Yeah, because you were there. I was there. I had <laughs> been I had there, done that. Housing assistance and food stamps and, and all of the things to help me get started in life. And and am very grateful that those programs were there to help me with that. So um, I, I was really, um, you know, I was able to go into that job and um, worked my way up through the years uh, from, you know, starting out as kind of a compliance officer to one of the the team that that ran the organization and and was really blessed with an amazing amazing career um, so yeah from management to development and finance i even um actually got to be an integral part of starting our statewide housing consortium way back in the day when, wow that's yeah. cool yeah <clears throat> So then you you were in there all that time. One of the things that you had shared with me about how you struggled with your sense of value because of being in that job. Can you tell us a little bit about that? You know, actually, I don't know that at the time I realized that that was a struggle. Wow. <laughs> Hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Right. So, yeah, it was one of those things where... Um, I think it's so easy to be in that situation and and feel like you needed to impress, you know, everybody with your knowledge and your wisdom. And, you know, it's like, look at me, I'm in this position. I've got to be all of that. <laughs> and so <laughs> um, I put a lot of pressure on myself to perform. And and I, I really that's part of my message to people. And today, people, you know, regardless of where you are, sometimes we put burdens on ourselves and expectations on ourselves that nobody else has. And that causes a lot of stress in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so I was having health challenges. And of course I was burning the candles at both ends and where it's working, you know, I, I, early on, I, I had some really great mentors in, in my career that said, you need to be careful, girl. You are, you know, you're, you're trying to do everything for everybody. And, and, just watch it because you're not going to survive at this pace. And mm. thank God that that God brought them into my life and gave them the courage to say that to me because it did help me to take a step back and create some boundaries um, in, in that career. In fact, I literally remember one time going into my boss and saying, you know, if you make me choose between this job and my family, I'm not going to choose this job. And that takes some courage to do. <laughs> it did. <laughs> and and I was prepared for the outcome if she said, fine, there's the door. I uh -huh. I just I knew that I knew that um, you know, one of the measuring sticks I used all the way through my career was when I was trying to make that decision about whether I go to that meeting or I go to my, you know. Uh, my aunt, my aunt's funeral. And I, you know, I didn't even have, that wasn't a reality, but whatever it was, but uh -huh. I was juggling the decision between work and the, my son's soccer game or whatever, or in soccer games is probably an exaggeration because there were a lot of those. So you had to miss a few, but, you know, maybe it was, um, I don't know, something a little bigger than that. I would really do the way on the scales and say, okay, 10 years from now, is my boss going to remember if I went to that meeting or is my son going to remember that I was at his event? Good and point. It's a gauge that I use so many times and it really did get me through some hard decisions. So I encourage people to try that one. Yeah, I think that's awesome. So then you exited corporate America. You did it early. You retired early. What caused you to leave? And I remember you sharing, you kind of went through a struggle and that whole changing from I, I can imagine it was really difficult. Corporate America can be very driving and very intense and then to not have all that intensity. Yeah. So I had worked myself my way up through the ranks. I was a, a director of one of our departments at the organization, had a staff of, I don't know, 12, 14, something like that, administering millions of dollars of subsidy and um, was actually considered a national expert in housing. Um, you know, I was, I was overseeing or not overseeing, I was facilitating conversations at our national conferences and things like that and, and loved it. I mean, it was just, I loved everything about my job, but there was just something that was 
luring me, you know, was, I had this, this empty spot in my heart that I knew that there was more to life. And then of course, I also had those health challenges that, mm-hmm. um, you know, I had had experienced TMJ and migraines, not a lot, but you know, it's like every time I would figure out what was causing the, the problem that I was having with my health, it always pointed back to stress, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> allergies, uh, you name it. I mean, every weight gain, it always came back to stress. And every time I'd figured out, then I would like work on stopping that symptom. Mm-hmm. My body just found another way to incorporate it. And so I actually, what happened was I started down the journey of becoming a health coach and got mm-hmm my health cert- coach coach certification and a master certification and life coach certification and all of that all before I retired. Wow. Um, but I just, I was having, so I had this amazing career. I loved my job, but there was this, this longing to do longing for more. That's my podcast name, right? Yeah. <laughs> longing for more. And my big struggle was to take early retirement. You take, basically you walk away with half of your salary every year in, in your retirement income which at that time was about $50,000 a year. Wow. And my husband was like, what? You know, we, we built this life. We have a plan. We, and you're going to do what? And of course, I always um, laughingly say, well, you know, God had to lure me away from that with the promise that I was going to make way more money as a coach, <laughs> which didn't happen, by the way. Um, <laughs> He gave, he blessed me in, in ways that I couldn't have even imagined would happen. But the real, what was funny was I, I literally was struggling with this decision. Should I, shouldn't I, or whatever. And um, the turning point was the day I was traveling with my cousin. We were heading to a, another family event and I, she must've been just sick of me talking about this and what should I do? And I just don't know. And she looked at me and she said, are you going to starve to death? And I knew in that moment that I wasn't going to starve to death, that God had provided for me so well, Um, even with half the salary, I was so blessed, you know, I could come home and lay on the couch and never do anything and and be able to meet my bills and rain responsibilities. And that was just such an eye opener to realize that God had prepared me for the next step before I even knew that it was the next step. So that, that was my big turning point. So yes, I started my own coaching practice. And of course I had no idea how hard it was going to be to learn how to do marketing and all the books. And I mean, all the, all the things I had no idea what I was walking into. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Just like years ago when I married my husband, we had, he had two girls and I will tell you that a blended family is not easy. And I remember saying years and years ago that had I known how hard that marriage was going to be at the start, I would have never done it. Mm-hmm. And I thank God that I didn't know. Yes. And I will say the same thing about leaving my my corporate career and starting my, which is now my faith business. Um, had I known, I probably wouldn't have done it. And thank God I didn't know. Yes. And that's why he doesn't show us the whole path, right? We, he, we just get to see the next step. And sometimes we don't even see that until we take the step he told us to take the time mm-hmm. before. But life is really a journey and it's all about learning to trust him. And that's really the core of it all is learning to trust God. And it is so hard to do. Right? So would you say that that is the anchor that I mentioned at the beginning is trusting God? Would you call yeah. that your anchor or how would you define your anchor that helped you through, you know, your son and, you know, all the hard parts of the blended family and at work and leaving work and all the things. You know, um, I think it is. I don't know that I realized that then. Again, the my <clears throat> story is learning to trust God and and it hasn't really been. I mean, I so it's been six years since I left my my corporate job and have and have been on this this journey of coaching and writing the books and all of that. And I've had other issues even, even along there. Um, But yeah, I think, I think it was, you know, just that, that, that nudge that I would get and would be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And I would get, it was faith, but I didn't even realize that it was like, again, it was just baby steps, Mm -hmm. just doing that next thing. And I didn't realize how, huge trusting him can be. And, and that's really what living your more is, is having faith and, and trusting God 
to do those crazy things he asks us to do that make no sense whatsoever. Like and, when he told you and you were sitting on the edge of the tub and you're holding your early pregnancy test and he says, we got this. Yeah. You had to choose to believe that. You had to choose to say, okay, I believe you and, and I'll keep going. That was a choice you had to do to trust. Right. That was hard, I bet. <laughs> yes, it, it really was. And and again, when I retired and when I, you know, um, all, you know, yeah, I, I had breast cancer. Um, mm. And that's a whole nother thing. But I, so it was caught really early um, and made the decision to do a double mastectomy with reconstructive surgery, just because that that seemed like the clear path. I can't tell you how many people told me how brave I was to do that. It wasn't bravery. It was just, that was the next step. And, and I knew that it was going to be okay. I like how you use that word. I learned that word many years ago from a lady who taught at one of the churches I went to. She used that word seemed. It seemed like the thing to do. And that that's, I think such a good word for the nudge that the Lord gives us. It yeah. seemed like the thing to do. I mean, it's not blatant, like, oh, yeah. I mean, there, there are times when I feel like I know something. But then there's other times it's just like, it just it's, it seemed, seemed. I just needed, it seemed. So I really like that word, how you mentioned that, because I, I think that's telling. And for you who are listening, think about times when you've made choices. And maybe you listen to that seemed thing and you see how it played out and maybe another time you disregarded it because we all do <laughs> from time to time nobody's perfect and then how it played out that way and if we can listen to that seemed take a moment to pause then we can have better outcomes <laughs> yeah and and the beautiful thing is that when we're, and I truly, you know, it's like my, my second book is equipped for more and it's the 10 essential habits we need to stop fear, having fear and doubts of judgment, because we, that's one of our big holdbacks, right? From really living our more is, you know, it's either distractions, fear of either, you know, what might happen or judgment of what others will think, or, you know, just that, that busyness. I mean, th those are the things that hold us back, but if, if we're in the word and we're in prayer and we're listening to what God says, he will take us down the right path. But the beautiful thing is, is if we misunderstand, he will reopen different doors down the way. It's like he'll bring us back around every time because he does have plans for us. He, he knows exactly where he wants us to be and he will give us every opportunity to come back to that. Fortunately, there is forgiveness. There's, there's, um, just peace and knowing that it's it's all okay we we really can't screw this up <laughs> yeah he's with us all the way now you talk about living your more can you elaborate more <laughs> on sure. that of when you started living your more and what you really mean by living your more yeah Thanks for asking that because that's, that's really, to me, that's really important. Um, and I know that there are people that are like more, what are you talking about? And it started with that longing for more that, that something in my soul knew that there was more to life and listening to that and deciding, making the decision to do something about that. So more actually is an acronym. Um, and, and first it's the M is for something that's missing. There's something mm -hmm. missing in my life. Or O is order, where we start to create order out of these 10 habits, we start to create order in our lives and bring, you know, there's just, sometimes it just feels like chaos. Usually people who are not in alignment with God's will are stressed out and overwhelmed and just not knowing, you know, what, where to go, what to do. It just feels like chaos. And when we start following his path, we get order. And then the R is redefine. We redefine our priorities and we start looking at things from a different view and mm -hmm. we start living our life from a different perspective, from a biblical perspective. And then E is eternal. We start living our eternal purpose. And so that's what more is. And so for me, I think we, 
again, life's a journey and we, mm-hmm. we all have, we're, we're in different places in our faith and, and we need to learn not to judge people who are on a different path and in a mm-hmm. different place in their journey than we are. Yeah. But when we, when we, when we accept the fact that God is there and if we are in alignment with him, he will lead us down that path. Then we start to live our more. I don't know that we'll ever fully live it until we're in heaven, but we keep, you know, we, we start out. So my, my path, I actually um, created a system and my path is you start out as a dreamer. We've got this idea of what faith can be like. We, we, we acknowledge that Jesus is, is a part of our lives and, and we dream about how amazing our life can be. And then as we continue down that journey, then we become seekers and we just, you know, it's like, we're hungry for more. We, we want to know more about what this life can be like. And so we get into scripture and we start taking Bible studies and we do all these things. And then we get the, uh, the next step is an adventure. It's like, we, we've got a good solid foundation and now we want to live the adventure that God created for us. And we, so we start doing, taking those risks and doing those things that he's calling us to. And then the last step is to be a Sherpa. And that is where we have gotten comfortable with, with all of that. And we come back around and we help others along their path from dreamer to seeker to adventure. Now, people weave in and out of those different stages, but that's really our faith journey in, in my little system that I created. And, and for me, living my more is it truly, I mean, God, God, has a path for all of us. It's different for everybody. So my path isn't your path. Your path isn't my path. The listeners that are here today all have a separate path. And so again, we can't get into comparison and start saying, well, this is what Vana's more is than not. Gosh, I'm gonna have to quit my job and go write a book. No. <laughs> No, you don't have to not what your it job looks and go like. write a book. No. <laughs> I mean, maybe that is your more, but it's probably not for most people that are listening. And but the thing is, is if we start paying attention and, and getting in scripture, getting in prayer and listening to God, he will show us the path that is for us. To me, truly living our more is. And I just really literally came across this the other day because for me, peace and fulfillment is our is our benefit. And for a long time I was thinking that that's really what I was helping people with. What I realized the other day, I was really pouring through scripture again, but just, there's so many things there. Um, Galatians 525 is my new verse. And it's, if we are living by the Holy spirit, let us follow the Holy spirit's leading in every part of our life. And what we have a tendency to do is put our, our spiritual life in this little cubby hole. And we, pull it out and we go to church on Sunday and we might volunteer on, uh, you know, another night a week, or you know, we're doing all these things, but we keep it separate from our real life. And we're living our more when we are being spiritual and trusting God with every aspect, our health, our, um, our jobs, um, our family, our relationships, everything. When we trust him with all of those things, then we're living our more. Amen. I like how that Bible verse you pulled out talked about the Holy Spirit. So people can get tripped up when we talk about studying the Bible and things like that, and they can get what I call religiousized. And they just get into performance and behavior and adding this and speaking that and doing this. And but that verse talks about listening to the Holy Spirit, who is a person. So there we're back to that word seen, because that's how he tends to talk to us. It seemed seemed like I needed to do this, seemed I needed to read this, seemed I needed to call someone up and say, how are you today? Or whatever the thing was, it doesn't matter what it is, but to be, you know, paying attention to that and listening for you know, him to be speaking to us because he loves us so much. I love that you use the word intention. That's my word for the year is intentional and and just making decisions and doing things with intention because we can get distracted from our path if we aren't intentional about how we live our life. Oh yeah, the world is very distracting. There's a lot going on out there right now and a lot of it's very chaotic. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. So before we tie this up, what is something you want to make sure that you get to share with with our listeners today? Is there anything that you're like, I want to make sure if you leave here with one thing, I want to make sure that you hear me say this. You know, I I I really want people to realize that they are where they are 
you are let me let me start over again i'm going to look at you as the listeners if you're if you're watching the video and if, if you're listening to the audio i just want you to know that you are where you are for a reason um god will use wherever you use you wherever you are to fulfill a purpose and just another little side story on that for me years ago i left my job at the housing authority and went um, to a different job. I, again, I was lured away. I was going to make all this more money, blah, blah, blah. None of that happened. And I realized that after a year later, I had, I, it was, it was, did not fit. It, I mean, there were so many things that didn't work out in that job. And I was fortunate because a year later, I got to go back to the housing authority and complete wow. my career there. But while I was there that year, I met a woman who became a dear, dear friend of mine. And while I was there, her husband died of cancer. And I know that I know that I know that I was lured to that job so that I could be there to hold her hand through that season of her life. Wow. I got and goosebumps it, all over my body. <laughs> had nothing to do with the job, but mm -hmm. God knew that I, I was a piece. I wasn't the only person that walked through that journey with her at that season, but the friendship that we developed a, was priceless. And, mm -hmm. and, it was it helped both of us grow in our faith. So God uses us. So look around. Don't don't close in and, and you know, even when storms of life are there, look around and see who's helping you, who can you help? What are you learning? What's the lesson in what's happening right now? Because God gives us breadcrumbs to the wherever He's leading us and everything. He doesn't waste anything. Everything that's happening in our life is for a purpose. And we can He will bring it to good if we will follow where He leads us. Amen. Even our mistakes, even the things that we've done or things someone else has done to us, he will use even the things that were not intentional in our lives. If we <laughs> like will getting pregnant when we're 23. <laughs> yeah, you know, he'll use them because you Absolutely. I was just reading this morning and talking to him about how he wastes nothing he does he wastes nothing he will take anything that we have that we will say here can you do anything with this yeah. <laughs> and he can he can make it amazing because that's that's how he does things yes he does so share the names of your book we didn't really talk about the names of your book share the names of your books and then how can people connect with you so my first book is a different view start living the life your soul longs for and I, I, this tells, this is like weaves my story in with scripture and, and where I believe scripture has spoken to me. The Holy Spirit has spoken to me of the message that I have to give. So this is the why, why do we speak up? Why do we have the courage to talk about things that are important? And then the second book that just came out, um, not even a month ago is equipped for more. And this is the 10 essential habits that we need to stop our fear and doubts and boldly live our faith. I mean, I, it's such a long title. I should have shortened it, but it, it it's there for a reason. And um, it's what I, what I love about the way that the cover is designed is, you know, you can go equipped for more faith. You can skip all, you know, it's like, or boldly live our faith, but it's really about, not being afraid to do what the Holy Spirit leads us to do, whether it's having that difficult conversation with our friends whose daughter just got pregnant, or it's, you know, leaving our job, or whether it's talking to our husband about something that isn't working in your marriage, rather than clamming up, it's going and have that conversation. And, yeah. or maybe it's speaking out about something that you believe is really important in what's going on with society now. Do it in a kind and gentle way, but do it because God, that's what he calls us to, is to spread the message of, about him and his salvation. Okay. So I got into all of that. So, so those are my books. Um, the best way to find me really is um, just vonajohnson.com and it's V-O-N-A Johnson with an O.com. I'm, I'm creating a community and a membership. And so I'm kind of in transition right now. Um, this is um, something that's been brewing and it's kind of one of those things I feel like I've been avoiding and, and, you know, it's like, Oh, let me go do this. Oh, let me go do this. And God is like, dang it, girl, it's time. And, <laughs> and what's really cool about it is I'm in this season where my folks are get aging and needing more help all the time. 
my son and his family just moved to the town that we live in. And I want to be available on both ends of that spectrum to help. And so I just realized that that means that will I coach? Sure. If somebody needs, you know, but I'm not out there marketing that I've, I've done masterminds in the past and I want to do masterminds in the future, but I'm not out there marketing that I'm going to weave some of those features into my membership and I'm just going to allow it to grow organically. And so truly hop on my newsletter from, and, you know, grow with me. Um, it's, it's a journey. If I wait until I'm there, um, who knows when that will be. So if anybody's intrigued by what's going on in Vanna Johnson's life, um, hop on and, and take the ride with me. I would love that. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all that. And I even want to go back and re-say a couple of words that you had said, because I think they're so important. You talked about having the boldness to speak up, but do it in a kind and gentle way. Thank you for saying that. Yes. Because we need we need it done in kind and gentle way, but we do need people to speak up. We need both of that. If someone's in your face, you're not listening anymore. No, we, no it, one's ever won somebody to Christ by yelling at them. <laughs> no one's ever persuaded anyone that way either. They've <laughs> right. coerced and manipulated, but no, there's not been any true change without the kindness and the gentleness. Amen. So thank you for being with us today, Vana. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for sharing your story and all those little things. Thank you for encouraging my audience today. Thank you. And my well, audience, I... thank you for listening to us today. I love you. You know I love you. I'm that lady on the internet who loves you. And so until next time, bye-bye.